Now, good, good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Scott Thielen, and uh, I oversee the BIM for Valcabedes Mission Critical efforts here in the state. Uh, very excited to be here this morning to speak about how I see BIM technology being currently leveraged in our data center project. Uh, my topics and examples I'll be focusing on are both around our internal processes and leveraging emerging technologies in order to add value, reduce risk, and ultimately bring value to our um, I'm going to go ahead and turn off the web meeting and go ahead and launch my PowerPoint. Let me turn this off. Okay. Uh, okay. Is it working? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Perfect. All right, everybody. Um, what I've done for this presentation is I've basically broken down the content I'm going to go over into five areas of focus. And we'll be demonstrating a wide range of implementation and BIM technology to all our, on all our data center projects. Um, the first thing I'm going to go over is these are the five topics right here. Uh, the improved access to information. Our focus here is to create value through increased efficiency and accuracy of, what, of how we access and share information. While there are many pieces and parts that go into managing a successful paperless job, the process of hyperlinking the drawing. Uh, we hyperlink the drawing set, not just the sheet level, but we do it to the detail. Um, currently, we use Bluebeam software for this function. Uh, the documents are on a secure cloud server and synced to our team's mobile devices in the field. Uh, for efficiency purposes, the documents are then created with an ultimate goal of the user being able to navigate anywhere within the document set within three clicks. The process ensures accuracy by eliminating any possibility of our field staff referencing old documentation. Uh, the next thing I wanted to go over was just touch on uh, improved system coordination. Now, this is something you're all probably pretty familiar with. Um, it's not something that's used not specifically in data centers. It's uh, used in many construction projects in many markets. Now, systems coordination or clash detection, as it's more commonly referred to, has been an essential workflow of all our data center work for several years now. Data centers are unique in many ways, and when it comes to running systems coordination, there are many considerations that require a much higher emphasis and examination than what is typically found in other commercial projects. Um, I've listed a couple of them out on the screen uh, that you can read for yourself. While the quantity of mechanical, electrical, and plumbing and fire protection systems is similar to some healthcare project infrastructures, the system redundancies and pure mass of underground system routing and a data center makes coordination of these systems a unique challenge. The, the process is typically performed several times. Um, we do it early on with our design, design partners, uh, again after the MEP trades are brought on board, and periodically during construction to ensure that all models are frequently being updated to reflect the as-built conditions. Uh, 
so much time and focus goes into these coordinations that uh, accurate inf execution of the actually of the actual installation of the process is it, the most essential thing. Uh, uh, um, this kind of leads into my next slide, which is basically trying to close the loop in the entire coordination process. Uh, many contractors uh, focus on clash detection and maintaining the 3D model reflective of record conditions. Um, but they ultimately lose on the fact that, you know, you can't, all, all the work that you, yes? Can you guys hear me okay? Yep. Okay, I'm sorry, I was getting a bad echo back. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you guys. Okay, let me keep it going. Um, guys, the, basically, we do all this work on the coordination side, and what we're finding is that a lot of the tight tolerances in the coordinated model, um, the subs, if they don't have the field layout ability and a lot of the total stations, and to be, able to, to be able to lay it out to the tight tolerances that we actually coordinate to, it loses, the process loses a lot of its value. Um, so we're finding it essential to align ourselves with key subcontractors who embrace and utilize the model-based layout as their preferred method of installing their systems. This, is, this attention to accuracy basically ensures that the tight tolerances that, are, that we coordinate to are actually met when they install it in the field. Um, something I wanted to go over, which is an area that I'm very passionate about, is really around improving our visual communications. I feel the importance of using technology for visual communication is essential when you look at the areas of a data center around site security and safety. Uh, an interesting fact for you guys, uh, studies show that a person really only processes about 10% of what is actually verbally communicated. Um, that number rises a little bit to about 20% uh, when they actually read something. And then the number actually jumps as high as 80% when a person actually sees something or does something. Um, so a good example here is that up in the upper right-hand corner, I've laid out or shown a typical um, secure entrance area for a data center. Uh, we have a vehicle entry and we have a pedestrian entry with badging. That same drawing is also demonstrated down below in the 3D renderings that you see. Um, you can obviously tell that there's a much more robust and um, higher level of information that can be portrayed when you're showing things like that. Uh, that we're finding to be a very high value on projects, like I said, that involve a lot of site safety and especially the security that's um, necessary when you get into the, um, uh, the category three and four data center type facilities. All right, let me flip back over. All right, there we go. Um, another item I wanted to go over was Downstream, I think a lot of value has to be placed on what we're actually going to give the client. And we do focus a lot on this. Um, basically, this, what I'm showing you on screen, both improves the QA, QC process and provides our clients with an effect, efficient access to close out information. Um, the one example that you're actually seeing the work flow four on the screen is where we're actually taking O&M information, which is usually given to the owner at the end of the project. We're storing all of it on a, a secure cloud-based server. We're creating QR codes, which are basically made up of a PDF package. Those QR codes are then placed on all the equipment in the facility and can even be placed on the inside of door jams throughout the facility to include room and space information. So the facility managers 
who are right there trying to service a piece of equipment. They have a problem. They need to get anything right down to a paint color of a room. Can easily scan one of these QR codes and bring all that information up on their mobile device, whether it be iPad, smartphone, um, whatever. So the single PDF package can actually hold all the data for the piece of equipment while not actually deviating from the native file formats associated with those files. So Word documents are Word documents, Excel documents are Excel documents. The O&M data can then be edited downstream for years to come without needing to update the QR codes themselves. So they're flexible, they can be added to, they can be modified um, without hurting the system that you already have in place with the QR codes. Uh, we're finding a lot of owners um, are actually really love this technology because they can get the information they want at their fingertips when they actually need it. And those are the items I want to go over. Guys, thank you very much.